So, what did cavemen have for breakfast? Well, this is a really interesting question, and I'm interested in human evolution. And the question of food, what did they have for breakfast, is a good way of putting it, is actually quite important for understanding the way we walk and the way we talk and the way we make things, the way we interact with one another. Food is actually quite central to understanding our place in the world. So I'm very interested in teeth, and teeth are quite important when studying human evolution because they're actually quite abundant in the fossil record, so we have very many teeth to look at. They're also important because they tell you who you're looking at, and they're often quite useful for identifying species in the fossil record. Uh, they're also quite useful for learning about their life in the past. Now you can look at this, the size of a tooth or the shape of a tooth, which might tell you something about how it's adapted to its environment. Uh, you can look at pits and scratches on the surface of the tooth that might tell you something about the mechanical properties of the foods it was eating, uh, how hard the foods it was consuming were, or how tough those foods were. Now, what I do is I work on stable isotope analysis, which gives us a different perspective on life in the past. And what we can do is we can actually use these teeth and scrape a bit of the surface of the tooth, the hard outer layer of the tooth called tooth enamel, which is the, the white layer on the outside of your own tooth. And we can use this tooth enamel and react it with a bit of acid, which generates carbon dioxide. We can take that carbon dioxide and concentrate it at cold temperatures using liquid nitrogen, and we can send that concentrated gas into an instrument called a mass spectrometer. What a mass spectrometer does is it measures the ratio of heavy to light isotopes of a particular element. And we often work on carbon and oxygen, which can be quite useful for understanding diet and climate in the past. And we can use those numbers to really understand what our ancestors were doing, what their lives were like, what their world was like, and also something about the animals that they shared the landscape with. So in terms of the different kinds of foods that our ancestors, we think, may have eaten, is that we think the earliest ancestors may have had a diet similar to living chimpanzees that would have focused on fruits and leaves and nuts from, from trees primarily. Uh, we do know that at some point in the course of human evolution, people began to eat more meat. And we know that because we see the uh, processed bones of other animals that they would have been perhaps killing or perhaps scavenging on the landscape and consuming. My research is focused on humans in the past, and since we don't have a time machine to visit and to watch and to talk to them, one way that we have to learn about humans in the past is to use what we call stable isotope analysis. And this is a chemical analysis that we can use on teeth or hair or bone or rock. You can look at really anything that's biological or geological. And what we're doing is we're measuring the elements that make up your teeth, for example. So to measure the isotopic composition of a sample, which could be, for example, a tooth, uh, what you do is you take a bit of that material. Uh, if I wanted to analyze a tooth, I would take a dental drill and drill a bit of powder off of that tooth. So I would take that powder, and we would put it in an oven and react it with a bit of acid. And what that reaction does, it produces some gas. And this carbon dioxide gas would then get concentrated at really low temperatures and then sent into an instrument called a mass spectrometer, which we use to measure the ratios of heavier and lighter versions of an element, which could, for example, be carbon or oxygen or nitrogen, all of the elements that make up the natural world. And that mass spectrometer uh, will then give you a number, which you'll see pop up on a computer screen. And basically, we can use that number and many numbers from other samples to reconstruct aspects of diet or climate or environment. And we can do this for things that are around in the world right now, living things, for example, people, animals. And we can also do this for ancient things. We have a fossil, which is the remains of an animal or a human that lived millions of years ago. We can use uh, this same technique to basically look at the past. 